Okay, so I just bought this at the Christian Bookstore in Knoxville. It's the Cedar Creek Bookstore. They have homeschooling supplies there. Some new, some used, predominantly used. Um, if you need something, I would just call them up and maybe they can ship it to you. Anyways, this is not supposed to be a comparison video, but I do want to show you just a couple differences. Now, obviously, this is BJ Press English 4, this is the teacher's guide, and this is Rod and Staff Grade 6 English. The difference between these two, with this, you can do videos or parent-led or both. You can do the teacher's guide and have videos. This is just a textbook that you reuse for each kid. This is going to come with a workbook for the student, and it's a consumable. It looks like that, and you throw it in the trash when they're done with it. This is a one-time investment. This is a every-year investment. You'll be buying a new workbook for each new kid. Um, if you like the convenience of video, well then, you know, this is great. However, this, this goes into, um, writing like right off the bat. So like a Becca is more like grammar in the beginning years, in my opinion. Um, can't speak totally from full experience. So, you know, this is just what I think, but you can do your own homework and determine what you think. BJU Press, starting in grade two, is kind of like English grammar and then writing. English grammar, writing. It'll be like one chapter this, one chapter that, one chapter this, one chapter that. Um, this is more like mastery. They go into like major detail. Um, with the way BJU teaches is usually like a uh, lesson at the top of a workbook page, kind of like this. And then they have some questions to go with it. Okay. The thing about this is they give you like a practice sheet for your kid. So if they don't do good on, on this sheet, they usually have like a backup one that you can print out. The only thing that I've noticed though is that it'll usually tap into something once and then it's, you know, they're kind of moving on. And I'm not saying they're not like touching on it in here later, but a Becca is spiral. So they teach you something new, but then don't forget the old and they teach you something new and don't forget the old. This one, I feel like, I feel like they call this mastery, but I feel like it's more, um, I don't know. I, I just feel like they kind of hit it once and move on. So um, an example, so Nora, um, some things, for example, like if she's struggling with this, you have a spare worksheet you can print out and then that's it. You got to like download some printables online. So basically they'll kind of just touch on something once and then move on like declarative and interrogative sentences, you know, one page front and back and something new imperative and exclamatory sentences Four types of sentences. Simple subjects, simple predicates, diagramming subjects and predicates, compound subjects and predicates. So if they don't get it here and you keep moving on, even if they touch into it later in here, if they don't understand it here and you keep moving on, will they get behind? That's, that's up to you. I don't know. So, you know... Nouns, common and proper, proper nouns, capitalization rules, capitalizing titles, common nouns, singular and plural, common nouns, special plurals, possessive nouns, singular, possessive nouns, plural, confusing proper nouns. Okay, so that's, that's kind of, so there's like, there's pros and cons and check out my other videos if you want more details on, you know, BJU Press or whatever. Rod and Staff, you can buy this on milestonebooks.com. This is 30 bucks. I got it for 11 And then you get like a student little book, and it looks just like this, except no answers. Um, so this goes into more detail. This looks boring, but it's not. It looks boring, but it's, it's really not. The way they teach is very down to earth and very easy to understand. And um, the lessons are like straight to the point, but they don't just touch on something once and move on. 
like each lesson is like very informative. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Let's make sure you understand. And this starts in grade two and it's excellent. Now I have not done all the different grades, so I can't tell you from experience. I can only tell you from what I observe. Um, now this is a textbook you buy once and you reuse it over and over for each kid. You would have their little book that looks like this, like it would have this in there and this in there. Um, so you would buy their book and then you'd have your teacher book and there you go. Um, you can also buy worksheets and tests, but this is not like a worksheet consumable type of curriculum. This is like just a textbook and you just, you write on a piece of paper. Now, you might say, oh, my kid doesn't like that. Okay, I can see the pros and cons. If if they have to write this all out, that could be really good for them because their brain will be remembering, writing down the grammar in the proper way. It could be really good. Um, if it's too much, they could just write out the answers or you could sit beside them and have them verbally go through it together with you. Now, if you don't have time You've got multiple kids. You've got a lot on your plate. It might become a thing where this won't get done if you just don't have videos like BJ Press offers. So you can do parent-led with the teacher guide. You can do video-led. If that's just easier for you, then get that. But if your child is like mine where sometimes she's like, wait, I didn't do so good, and now we're moving on to a totally different lesson for the next lesson. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand the last thing. And then I'm like, oh, I kind of feel like we're lacking here because now we need to like print out some printables online that touch more on whatever category she wasn't really understanding. A Becca is more like grammar focused in the beginning years. In my opinion, they still have writing, but they're they're like heavy grammar and a Becca is like spiral. So they teach a new concept and then, you know, don't forget the old. I think BJU Press English is considered mastery, so they just like hit it and move on. I don't I don't know exactly, but this is like great detail. So just trying to kind of give you a little uh, my opinions on things, but you know, whatever works for you. So here's the table of contents. Understanding sentences, learning about stories and directions. And feel free to pause it. Chapter 2, working with sentences, understanding paragraphs. Chapter 3, working with nouns, developing paragraphs. Chapter 4, working with verbs, writing outlines. Chapter 5, using verbs correctly, writing reports. Chapter 6, working with pronouns, writing letters. Chapter 7, using correct capitalization and punctuation, writing stories. Chapter 8, working with adjectives, writing descriptions. Chapter 9, working with adverbs, studying poetry. Sorry, I'm in Knoxville, so I'm not in my house here. That's why I'm on this little kitty table here. Chapter 10, using prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Communicating orally. Chapter 11, studying words using sentence variety. And then you have these worksheets and you can buy these. So if you buy the whole subject on Milestone Books, you get the teacher book, student book, the worksheets, and the test. I think it's like 60 bucks. And they have sales sometimes, or you can buy it used on eBay. Um, so these are like the worksheets. It's almost like, I don't really actually know. I think it's like extra practice or I don't really know. But um, this is typically not you know a consumable worksheet type of curriculum it's it's a textbook okay And it's very Christian. I would say you have like, you have multiple Christian curriculums. But like comparing a Becca, BJU Press, Christian Light Education, and Rod and Staff, 
I would say like the top two most Christian in like talking in the lessons is probably going to be like Rod and Staff, CLE, BJU Press, and Abeka. Abeka would be the least talking about God and Bible verses in my opinion. Just putting that out there. This is like, <laughs> like the questions will be like, Bible questions using for English. So they like they're really incorporating Bible and CLE is really good about that. BJU Press teaches a lot of Christian type stuff too and they they have some Bible verses here and there as well. Um a lot of extra resources that talk about biblical things but like incorporating a ton of Bible, I'd say like Rod and Staff and CLE probably the most and then BJU Press and then Abeka. Abeka is like a great curriculum, but I don't feel like it's heavy, heavy with just the regular subjects pushing Bible information, if that makes sense. Anyways, so let me just show you. Imagine a school that had no teacher or a school with a teacher, but no pupils. Or what if a school had a teacher and pupils, but was without books or paper? Such a school would not be complete. It could not accomplish the work that a school could get done. A sentence like a school has a job to do. Its job is to express a thought. And like a school, a sentence must be complete in order to do its work. If our writing has incomplete sentences, readers will not be able to understand our thoughts and ideas. We say then that a complete sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. To be complete, a sentence must have a subject and predicate. The subject tells who or what the sentence is about and the predicate tells what the subject does or is. Consider these complete sentences. Brother Luke preached an inspiring sermon. This sentence is about Brother Luke, and it tells what he did, preached an inspiring sermon. It expresses a complete thought. The playful kittens chased a ball of mother's yarn. What is the sentence about? The playful kittens. What did they do? Chased a ball of mother's yarn. This is a complete sentence because it has a subject and predicate and expresses a complete thought. A group of words that does not express a complete thought is a sentence fragment. A group of words may be a fragment for several different reasons. Okay, so then here's what you would, and I love how this is like so short. <laughs> this is the teacher part right here. Okay, what is the verb? Name all the helping verbs that you learned in grade five. What is a noun? Name the part of speech described. Okay, so then here's back to the student book. Sometimes a fragment does not have a subject. Fragment, played in the sand. This group of words does not make sense because it does not say who or what played in the sand. It can be corrected by adding a subject. Sentence, a little child played in the sand. Two, sometimes a fragment does not have a predicate. Fragment, the rich man job, Job. This group of words does not tell what the man Job did or was. It can be corrected by adding a predicate. Sentence, the rich man Job lived in us. Number three, sometimes a fragment does not have a subject or a predicate. In the morning at seven o'clock. This example does not tell who or what, nor does it tell what the subject did or was. It can be corrected by adding a subject and a predicate. We were eating in the morning at seven o'clock. Sometimes a fragment has a verb, but it still needs a helping verb. Without a helping verb, the subject does not make sense and is a fragment. Fragment. James running very fast. The fragment can be corrected by adding a helping verb. Sentence. James was running very fast. Okay, so you see here, sorry if it's like all shaky, I'm trying not to do that, but you see how it teaches. Very simple, so it's the point. So then here is class practice. So very simple, like on the other side of the stream. Well, obviously that's a fragment. There's no subject or predicate sentence. We have heard about the fire. Sentence. Was watching the birds. Fragment. No subject. Okay. So, the way I feel about Rod and Staff is that it goes into such great detail. Um, I can't speak from experience because I haven't done this, this grade here. 
Um, our focus has been BJU Press, but um, I can see where there's some lacking. So when I open this up, it kind of makes me feel like, ugh, should we be doing this instead? But I'm not putting down BJ Press because it, it's like a wonderful curriculum and has so many wonderful things. But you kind of just have to weigh out the pros and the cons because I might say, I love everything about BJ Press, but um, I wish it went into more detail like this so Nora could understand things a little bit further. But Nora doesn't want to sit down and do this by herself. She doesn't mind to sit down and do that by herself. And she likes the videos. She doesn't want to sit down and do this. She wants me to kind of like sit down beside her and hold her hand through the whole process and learn with her, which is fine. But so you kind of just have to figure out like you might like this better and think this is better. But if you're not going to actually sit down and do it, then that defeats the whole purpose. So, um, I like that BJU Press has really great videos, um, but I like how this goes into more detail. And I, I, I hope I'm not saying anything incorrect, but I do feel it goes into more detail. But I, I can't speak from full experience, so you'd have to just do your own homework and determine what you think is best. I do have a lot of flip-throughs. So you can feel free to do some flip through and my videos and see what you can gather by what you see. sometimes like we wish things were different like we wish we could give each child all the time in the world you know but when you have multiple children you, your time is divided I can't teach all of my kids at the exact same time they're all on different levels so I have to take my time with each child so my time is divided so right now for kindergarten um, you know, like Gabriel, we're focusing on teaching him his math and penmanship and, you know, learning how to read. And Audrey's in a different grade and she's focusing on other things. Nora's in a different grade, you know, she's on different things. So, um, yeah, just trying to take the time with each kid. Okay, so I'm just trying to kind of show you just what, what it looks like on the inside. Um, not sure if I'm going to do like a whole flip through. I just, I'm already at 18 minutes. I might do another video. I'm not sure. But. There's a lot of pages in this book, so I, I don't think I can go through all of it. I think there's like so many pages. These are the worksheets. I think this is more just like extra practice. See what I'm talking about with the whole Christian thing? Like, let's 
sorry. If you guys want to see something specific, just, just ask me. That's pretty cool. It's showing you how to correct this writing. That's pretty cool. So... That's good. It teaches you how to correct things. That's great. Anyways, I, I think very highly of this. It, the lessons are really not long either. Like it might look long, but this is kind of like a conglomeration of things. It's really not that long. My daughter and I one time timed how fast she could get through a lesson. And that was me and her. We would sometimes read the first part where it does like teaching. We would kind of tag team. And then she, we would say, okay, you know, here's your questions now. You know, what's the answer? And, and she would tell me. And we got through it in like five to eight minutes, I think. It was very quick. kind of helps you all right guys I'm pretty much wrapping it up. If you want to see something specific, just let me know. See ya.